Hello and welcome to this video on a rather notorious Prussian pet project and attempted human selective breeding. The Potsdam Giants is a name given to a Prussian military unit formed by King Frederick Wilhelm I of Prussia in about 1675. It is also called the Prussian Infantry Regiment No. 6. After Napoleon defeated Prussia in 1806 it was dissolved. That makes sense, since maintaining a military unit of this specificity was not cheap. Grenadiers were both elites, well equipped, and often meant to fight in the front line, so expected greater pay. This was taken to a ridiculous extent by Frederick I. Frederick I required soldiers serving in this unit to be at least 1.88 meters, or 6 foot 2 inches tall. This was well above the average height of about 1.65 meters or 5 feet 5 inches for the time. The tallest recorded soldier to serve was 2.17 meters or 7 feet and 2 inches in height. Even by modern sizing, these people were incredibly large, and the tallest serving member was giant even by that reference. To promote this unit, Frederick I recruited every tall man available. This meant several hundred were recruited into it each year. To gain favour with him and the Russian country as a whole, other nations sent a number of their tallest soldiers to serve, and the Prussian army was able to recruit directly from these serving units. This includes Russia, Austria, and the Ottoman Empire. Frederick I took this several steps further. He would try to kidnap them in other cases. This includes tall people from other countries who were in that country at the time. Frederick would pay large sums of money to tall parents in exchange for them surrendering their child to him to serve in this unit. We've already described Potsdam Giants as an experiment in selective human breeding, and this is because Frederick I had one more approach up his sleeve. He tried to make these already tall soldiers marry tall women and have even taller children. This was so noteworthy that Darwin wrote about it at the time. Nor have certain male and female individuals been intentionally picked out and matched, except in the well-known case of the Prussian Grenadiers, and in this case, man obeyed, as might have been expected. The law of methodological selection, for it is asserted that many tall men were reared in the villages inhabited by the Grenadiers with their tall wives. Frederick I was able to breed his giants between 1713 and to 1740. This is 27 years of selection. While in the modern day it is common to not have many children until you were at least 20, this was not necessarily in the case. In upper society, marriage was around 22 for females and 26 for males. In the lower strata of society, this figure was reduced significantly. This means there was a chance for up to four generations of giants to have been bred under Frederick I's program. The Potsdam giants were a freak show of sorts. This is because they all had a form of gigantism or through positive nutrition were able to grow exceptionally tall. Although various genetic mutations have been associated with gigantism, they're not all necessarily caused by that. In this case, it would be a fair assertion to make that since about 50% of gigantism cases are linked to genetics, the other 50% are not linked to genetics. We specify gigantism as it is explicitly characterized by the production of growth hormone. Growth hormone is what causes gigantism and is the hormone responsible for the increase in muscle, bone and so on needed for their exceptional height. It's nearly always caused by a growth in the pituitary. This is the same part of the brain that produces things like oxytocin and a lot of other hormones in the body. The growth there causes the pituitary to continue to put out growth hormone even when it shouldn't be. Where we're not looking at a purely genetic or hormonal basis, 
the size of the individuals was further supported by the increased support in the form of money, food, secure employment, and so on. This provided all the needed material for a person to survive, grow, and reproduce, and still remain big. This is demonstrated through one of the more unusual quirks of the Potsdam Giants. Rates of pay were correlated to height alone. This meant you could be the best soldier in the world, but you would be paid less than someone who was taller than you. In order to ensure that those members who were voluntarily enrolled in this unit remained so, they were given the best accommodation and food available. The project didn't just end with what we've mentioned. There is a somewhat seedier side to this. Frederick I wanted his soldiers to be taller. The problem was, most of them had already gone through their growth phase and weren't likely to become any taller. This meant that he had to find a way to stretch them out. He had a rack custom made, and by rack we are referring to the thing that was used to torture people in the medieval period. This was intended to increase their height by stretching them. Frederick I would often oversee these sessions himself. The problem with it is that uh, it wasn't exactly successful. Arguably, it had the opposite effect. He ended up killing many of the soldiers who were involved in the stretching process. Frederick I died in 1740, and when he died, the unit had approximately 2,500 members. That's a lot of soldiers. A lot of soldiers in a relatively small area who were breeding prolifically. And this is where we get to a unusual development. It would appear that his plan to selectively breed tall individuals did work, just not while he was alive. Getting to the latter part of the 18th century, the population of Potsdam had a significantly higher number of tall individuals than other parts of Prussia did. In the end, the Potsdam Giants did have an effect on the local population. It took time, and in the long term, and we mean much longer term, it might have shown the outcome that Frederick I wanted, that is, a large number of very tall men to serve in his special grenadiers' units. The result did come at the cost of people's liberty, selective breeding, and a regimented life, for those who volunteered. For those who didn't volunteer, it meant effective slavery. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.